Okay, so hello and welcome to this video. We're going to be having a look at these LED moving head washes. These are branded as uh, Mini LED Moving Head Wash or something along the lines of that. A few years back I did do an unboxing and review on some of these, but they were the spot version. These are the wash. I bought four as a bundle from one seller on eBay. I believe they're supposed to be U-King branded. They also have remotes and things apparently. They cost around about £170 including shipping at the time of purchase and filming of this video. So uh, let's have a look at what we've got and what they're like. So here is one box. I'm just going to cut the tape on it as they're all sealed with sellotape. This box has just got a random long number on it, a QR code and made in China. I'm assuming that must be something to do with manufacturing. Maybe a batch code or something. In the box, the first thing we see is a power cable with an appropriate plug. This is a UK plug. The quality on this um, feels okay. Um, it's better than a lot that I've had. It's all moulded. It says it's 13 amp. Um, let's have a look at what fuse is in it. That's usually a good indication. So uh, it reckons... Yeah, it's brown and it's 13 amp. So that could well be an alright mains cable. A lot of these come with very cheap nasty mains leads. We'll see how well the fit is and I'll check it with a meter just to make sure it's wired the right way around later on. The next thing we've got in here is the bracket. This is for mounting it on a T-bar stand or lighting truss or however you may want to hang this thing up. Uh, you screw this into the light and then bolt or screw that up to wherever. These are then two washers and two thumb screws. These will be to attach that bracket to the base of the light. We've got a little LED Y007 remote control. Um, this will be the IR remote for them because apparently these have got remote controllability as well as being DMX or sound to light etc. We've got a few settings on here, on off, flash, save, so you must be able to save settings and programs. Manual movement for the X and Y, which will be pan and tilt. Two music settings, three auto settings, red, green, blue, red, green, red, blue, colour mixing, etc. And we've got the little user's manual. Literally little, I don't think there's, oh no, there is an inside section to it. So, as it says, mini LED moving head user's manual. Shows you the remote, tells you what the buttons are. Adjusting pan, tilt, slow, fast, auto running modes, colour selection modes. Then we've got a display overview. So it shows you if it's receiving a slave signal, a DMX signal. Menu down into buttons. This tells you what all the buttons do, entering menus, functioning DMX mode, etc. These are all the readouts on the display and what they mean. So DMX address, so D with a number is the DMX address setting or slave setting. And AFA sets it to fast. You've got sound mode, standalone auto, slave mode, slow auto mode, reversing the pan, the tilt, the display for if you're hanging it upside down. Uh, 14 on 19, 14 on 9 channel DMX operation. Uh, pan 540, 360 or 180 degree. Tilt 270, 180 or 90 degree. Reset or load uh, factory settings as well apparently. We've got a DMX chart here for 9 channel operation. So channel 1 is pan, 2 is tilt. Three is the dimmer and strobe functions. Four is red, five is green, six is blue, seven is white. So these are RGBW, red, green, blue, white LEDs. Channel eight, X, Y speed, which will be the pan and tilt speed, so how fast it moves. And channel nine is reset, like a remote reset function. And 14 channels on the back. Channel one is pan, pan fine, tilt, tilt fine, X, Y, uh, dimmer, Red, green, blue, white. Mixed colour depending on channels. Um, colour macros, colour jumping. Colour jumping speeds. Uh, slow and faster. That's the built-in programmes that you can run. And uh, reset. I'll actually be making a Freestyler programme and using these with Freestyler DMX, the free software, via a laptop. I may make a video on that as well if, uh, if anyone's interested in that. So, the light itself is in this uh, polystyrene foam packaging. Seems quite decent. This could be useful um, 
what I'm going to be doing is putting these into a proper flight case. So what I may well do is make a, a case that maybe splits in half, glue this foam into the bottom, glue this into the top, sit all the lights in and just put the lid on. So that could be good as packing for them to reuse this, repurpose it. So the light itself is here in a plastic bag. Let's just get that out of the way. They're not especially heavy. Um, they're mostly plastic. I can hear a little... That must be the stop switch that lets it locate. On the front, we've got a few scratches and stuff from the factory on it. A uh, little IR hole there, that's for the remote control. The button's there. The stickers are not applied very straight. Just same as the last set I looked at, there's a few sort of slight quality. Um, you know, well, you get what you pay for at this price bracket. Around the back, we've got the mains power input. Standard IEC uh, kettle type connection. It's got a fuse holder there. I don't know if it's got a fuse in it. We can also have a quick look. I would hope so. It does indeed have a fuse in it. That fuse is rated for 10 amps, which seems a bit excessive. So I may well downrate the fuses in these because there's no way these are going to consume 10 amps. We've got DMX in and output on a 3 pin XLRs. On the side, we've just got Professional Show Lighting Wash Mini LED Moving Head. They're all plastic construction all round, including the base. I believe the last lot of these I looked at that were uh, spots with gobos, they had metal bases but plastic surrounds, I think. So these are, are cheaper again, there's, there's less weight to them. Um, the bracket to mount it goes into the bottom here. Now what I'm noticing and I kind of don't like, I'm not overly keen on, is that these are threaded inserts into plastic for the bracket, um, which means if these inserts were over tightened or somehow came loose, it could just drop off the bracket, supposedly. Um, it's, it's one of those things really. There's another hole here which I'm assuming is to put a eye in for a safety chain, for if that does fail it'll catch it, but if it did fall off the bracket and was falling, I don't think the plastic housing would hold that in place anyway. So that's maybe something to be mindful of, uh, depending on what environment you're using these in and if they're over people's heads. The is a model number here, which is ZQB136. And uh, it's got the manufacturer information there and such. You can have a read of that if you want. I'm not even going to try and pronounce a lot of that. We've got these plasticky feet. Looks like they could have rubber pads in them, but they've not actually put them in. Um, so yeah, they're, they're just plastic. They might actually be moulded. Yeah, they're moulded on the base. Um, cooling fan in the bottom that sucks air in. Other than that, what have we got on the head itself? We've got a fan on here. Yes, we've also got a fan in the back there. You can maybe just about see that. The blades of it is quite hard to see. Um, but there's a fan in there blowing that way into the head. Uh, I may well just strip one of these apart so we can have a look at the internals on it. But um, what I'm going to do first is just plug one in and just see if it works. So let's just get a mains lead. Okay, so I've got a power cable here. I'm just going to plug this in and see what happens. So it's clicked. I'm noticing it's not gone completely straight though um, when it has clicked off. See, there's. Um, in fact, it won't go any further, so it doesn't go completely around. Uh, it's on DMX operation mode uh, by default. It's on D001, which is channel 1. So I'm just going to go through the modes. Um, NT, NSTS. I don't think that what that was. What's that? Sound. So S I U N means sound. So it will react to sound. And move in that mode and change colors it seems very bright um, I'll give it that it's kind of impressive pan tilt that's for reversing and display 14 channel so it's set to 14 channel DMX mode PA 540 that's 540 degree pan tilt 270 which is max which is completely from there to there if you reduce these you can do just a forward facing um, show so you can reduce the pan to be like 180 degrees and reduce the tilt to only be sort of 90, 100 and what, 180 whatever um, the settings are on it. 
the 90 degree tilt, 180 or 270. I'm going to leave them on max because um, I don't need that functionality. Reset will just reset it back to default positions, same as when you plug it in. Load, loads factory program, which I don't know what that is, so I'm going to leave that alone. But yeah, um, when you go to that screen there, I think you press up and down. Yeah, NAFA. So fast, that's doing an automatic fast show. So it won't react to sound in this mode, it'll just keep running through um, preset settings. There's also a slow mode if we go to SL. So that is just slow movement, slow steps. The fan is rather loud, um, really. But at the same time, having said that, usually you're going to have music on at a reasonable level when you're using these, so you wouldn't hear the fan over it. Um, yeah, it's it's not a big deal again for me. I'll be using these with bands and things like that and at, at uh, small festivals and things. But yeah, this is how you cycle through the various modes anyway. Uh, I'm going to put it back to sound operation, which is this mode. So let's try the remote now um, and have a quick look at that. So, I'll take this tab out, which uh, disables the battery. I'm going to move the light back and try and fit the remote and the light in. So, we've got on off, so we'll try that first. Ah, so turning it off just resets it to, to defaults and turning it on just, just leaves it wherever it's standing. It's still in sound mode, it's not changed the mode at all. So if we push um, Auto 1, for example, it's gone into Art 1 on the front now. So it must be running an automatic program that's built in. Let's try it. Auto 2 puts it into fast. Auto 3 puts it into slow. Uh, manual just puts it onto P0. So I'm assuming this will then use the X and Y buttons to move. Yeah, so X is your pan. So you can manually sort of focus them in one area. Y will do the tilt. I can just put that back to manual. Oh. I'm actually just going to set that back to zero. So if I put it on music one program, it puts it into just sound mode by the looks of it, which is what I put it in before. Let's try sound uh, music two. So that's music two. It seems to be um, slowly moving constantly, even when it's not picking up any sound. As you can see, when I go quiet, it just slowly moves. But then when it picks up sound, it, it goes fast. Again, uh, we've then got. Oh, I don't know. Let's put it onto red. Okay, so red doesn't do anything here. Let's put it on auto one. Uh, it's already in red. So let's try green. Ah, so in auto one, if we change the press these buttons, it'll keep moving, but we can choose the color. So let's go red, green, red, blue green, blue, or uh, white. So yeah, auto one, you can choose the color manually with the remote. I'll put this back into, uh, do, 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 do. I'm just gonna put this onto, oh, there's a flash button as well. Let's try the flash. Uh, so flash just turns strobe on. And press it again to turn it off. Okay, so let's try uh, attaching this bracket and just have a look how well this works. And then we'll try uh, taking the actual casing off and having a look at the internals of this thing and see what makes it tick. So these are sort of rubber but quite plasticky um, washers. There's a little bit of a rubber content to them from the feels of it. I would imagine those are supposed to go underneath the bracket there. And the screw goes on top because that has got sort of a, a piece on it there. So, I suppose you could always put the rubbers on top of this bracket as well, but this way it gives it a little bit of a separation. 
because some of these screws do stick out a bit so you might be pushing on those otherwise but each to their own so with this applied and tightened down that is quite tight actually and they're not rounding off that's that is um so tight that it actually makes my fingers sore to push on it you can see the indents in my fingers there so uh, that's actually not bad when it's uh, attached on the bracket like this I'll give it a good shake nothing much uh, up with that actually I'm quite surprised it's kind of sad that they don't include the safety eye for here uh, I will probably make something up or have something that will be threaded in there what size is that hole I would say that is probably M5 looking at it um, the diameter of that hole there that you'd want M5 uh, eye bolts so I'm going to take this off now and let's uh, take some of the casing off and just have a look at the inside and see how well this thing's constructed okay so for tearing this thing down I can see that the casing at the back here is lipped over the other casing so we're going to have to start by taking this off that just looks like four screws on the back end and that's off there so that is as expected put those screws to one side with that and now we've removed that we've got some of the internals exposed we can see there's that switch that's the stop for the pan that's clicking we've got the stepper motor here which drives the pan with the belt around it which you can just about see uh, top of there that's probably a better way of seeing it you'll see more when we take this covering off uh, and then there's also the board there with the DMX connectors on it and stuff so with that off the next thing we're going to have to do to get into this thing I would say is probably take these screws here out so I'm going to remove them and have a look what else is in the base all of the smaller screws in the centre usually hold in the control boards and things, so you don't really want to remove those. With those four out, are we loose? We are indeed. The control panel seems to be attached to this front section here. So I'm just going to slowly um, pull this one way or the other to see. Oh, actually all of the electronics seem to be on this front panel here. And I can't actually separate it because of the wiring. So if you can see in there, um, there's this one cable here running around that way, which I would assume is probably for the LED, no it's for the stepper, and then the rest is all plugged into the control board that's literally on the back of this display. So this is doing everything, there's no secondary board in there is there? Yeah it's just a power supply I think looking at it. Uh, if I can get that plug out, I can take this front off and we can see closer. Okay, yeah, I've got that out. So, there we go. That's the uh, lead to that step and motor for the pan. This is the control board on the back of the display where all the, uh, everything is wired to pretty much, as you can see. Um, there's another connection there that's not used. That's what I've just took the stepper out for pan. Uh, that's just a 12 volt header. I'm assuming that's for an additional fan. There's a pot there for adjusting something. I'm not going to touch that. There's the microphone, the internal mic for the sound to light. Around the side here, we can now see the power supply a little better. It uh, goes most of the way through the unit, actually, by the looks of it, yeah. It's going right into the middle and then some. We've also got the fan here mounted directly under this stepper. Can't really see too much in there, but you know, it gives you an idea. There's a little transformer, a couple of caps. All the wiring uh, goes up through the middle of the head there. You can sort of make out. There you go, you can kind of see that silver thing there. That's uh, through the middle of the head here, and then it'll come up into this section and, and up one of the sides or the other. So, yeah. I'll put the bottom back together and then we'll take the top off and have a look at the back of the, the head itself. Okay, so the base is back in one piece. Let's have a look in the head itself. So we've got screws in that side and screws in that side. Uh, I'll just take this side out. 
Okay, so there's the four of those screws out. This top section now is loose. That screw is still caught a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we can see in the top of the thing. The fan is actually pre-dusty, so I'm assuming they must test these before shipping them. Because if you look there, can you see where I've just wiped my finger and it's cleaner than the other part? I don't know if that'll really come through on camera. But there's actually um, there's dust on it here, and if I wipe that, yeah, so I'm assuming they must try them in the factory. So the screw's in for only I have a corner for the fans. I suppose that's a cost saving and time saving measure. I've got these weights here in the back. Must be to balance the thing out. There's actually weights on both sides. I can see the other side there. There's not much in the top. There's a heat sink here attached to this board, which has got the LEDs mounted on it. And the actual uh, diodes themselves in order to keep them cool. That's then thermal pasted on looking at it. I think there's some, yeah, I can see some of the white paste around the edges of it here. I've got the stepper there that's directly driving the uh, tilt. There's no belts involved. So that's just direct out onto the arm there. And all the wiring stuff goes through. There's a nice bit of slack on everything. See, seems all right, you know, it's for the price point and what they cost, it is what it is. I mean, the going price, well, I paid 170 pounds for four. So that's like £42.50 a light, something like that, £42.50. I mean, you can pay more than that for a pack cam. Well, let's put this back together. And then I might do a quick uh, show for you using the Sound to Light program so you can have a look. I'll unbox the others as well. Okay, so I've now got all of them plugged in. They're just plugged into the mains. There's nothing fancy going on. And I'm going to connect them. And we'll have a look. The whirring of the fan noise is definitely more noticeable when you've got four simultaneously operating. So it's a bit slow to initialize. It may depend on where they were positioned, but they're all on and in sound operation mode now. So, in theory, they should all operate. Microphone must be a bit, a bit less sensitive in that one by the sounds of it. Yeah, I think the mic might just be a bit down on level on that one. Um, but yeah, they're all operating sound to light of their own accord, as you can see. We can also link these together to do DMX and stuff. Um, I'll probably make another video on setting these up because I did that last time. Because not everyone necessarily wants to watch the review, they just want to see how to connect them together. But um, I suppose I'll put one on um, and play a bit of music so you can see what one's like on its own and how bright it is. And then I may link them all together and put some music on so you can see a show in, in sync with them copying each other. Okay, so that was a single unit demo um, on sound to light operation. One thing I have worked out that I'm not overly keen on just from doing that is that when the volume passes a certain level, um, they start to strobe and flicker. I don't know if you saw that. When it's strobing, um, it's constantly doing it uh, over a certain decibel or noise level. Um, so if you're somewhere that's really loud using them on sound to light, they'll probably just constantly strobe all the time which is not ideal. I couldn't really see a way uh, to prevent that either, which is a shame if that's the case. But I am going to be controlling these via DMX on my laptop and they'll be triggered via sound to light by the laptop. So that wouldn't be an issue in my use case, but it's something to be mindful of for some people that, uh, that may just want to use these standalone on sound to light or are linked together. So I'm gonna link the others up now and uh, we'll try them out, but one unit itself is quite incredibly bright what i'll probably also do is include a video of them set up um when i'm working with a band actually all together on a, a bar at the back or something with smoke and everything it'll give you a proper idea of uh, what they would look like then 
Okay, so I've just plugged them in. I've not actually changed the modes myself, but they've all just gone on to DMX channel 1. And I've detected that that one's on, so they're now copying each other. They're all in sync, the same pan tilt, etc. Um, so I'm going to just let them go like this. And you can have a look at what you think with four of them together. So there you go, uh, four heads linked together. I've tried them in various configurations with reverse tilts, pans, etc. That's how I've got the mirrored effect. Um, I'll do a separate video on DMXing them and how you should address them and make sure everything works. But it's actually even easier with these than the last set I did. I'll link the videos in the top corner up here and in the description of the old spot moving heads that I reviewed a couple of years back. I'll link the review and the setup video. Um, and I'll also link the DMX setup video for these somewhere up there so have a look on this little thing in the corner or uh, down in the description below but yeah for the money 42 pound 50 like 43 quid a light can't really fault them uh, i would change those main fuses out on the power inputs i'm probably going to rate them down to like a one amp two amp fuse something like that which should be enough for these because they're only low power leds anyway um i'll have a look what i've got and just if anything does go wrong it'll blow the fuse a lot easier and there's less chance of the light itself blowing up catastrophically if it's got a smaller fuse so that's my only real sort of griping issue with them yeah they seem pretty good i'll uh, also include a video at the end if i manage to record one of the four of them going with a band uh, it, it depends how i get time but thank you very much for watching if you like the video, please leave a like. If you've got any questions, feedback, comments, suggestions, etc., put them down in the comments section and I'll try and answer them or respond to you. And subscribe to my channel for future random sound, lighting, and various other videos just like this one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>